The U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris should be out of Ghana by now, and she should have wrapped up by now is her three-day visit to Ghana. But she leaves in her wake a major controversy. A question around, is the U.S. interfering in our quest to pass Ghana's gay bill? Because she's been speaking about this, but she was asked a question, a question about this particular bill, and what the U.S.'s position is on this at a press briefing where she stood side by side, the president of our republic. Listen to what she said. I have raised this issue, and let me be clear about where we stand. First of all, for the American press who are here, you know that a great deal of, of work in my career has been to address human rights issues, equality issues across the board, including as it relates to the LGBT community. And I feel very strongly about the importance of supporting uh, the, the, the freedom and, and supporting and fighting for equality among all people and that all people be treated equally. I will also say that uh, this is an issue that we consider and I consider be a human rights issue and that will not change so she considers it to be a human rights issue and it won't change so the president then got an opportunity to also respond to it what did he say this is the president bill has been proposed to the parliament of ghana which has all kinds of ramifications which is now being considered by the parliament it hasn't been passed so the statement that there is legislation in Ghana to that effect is not accurate. No legislation. The bill is going through the parliament. It's going through the parliament. The Attorney General has found it necessary to speak to the committee about it regarding the constitutionality or otherwise of several of its provisions and the parliament is dealing with it. The parliament is dealing with it. And then he ends by talking about the fact that he will come in when parliament is, is wrapped up. The speaker has taken issue with both of those comments you've just heard there, but particularly that of Kamala Harris. I was so happy when I read that for Francis directed that no reverend father to celebrate over a gay or lesbian marriage. <laughs> and I said, Roma Locuta complete. Causa finita. Yes, Rome has spoken, and the matter is ended. So please, committee members that will refer the bill to, we want the report. Don't be intimidated by any person. Hallelujah. I made this statement when I was a member of the European Parliament. European ACP Parliament in Brussels. Now we have two of our members who happen to be leading our committee, Constitutional Legal and Parliamentary Affairs, who are handling the bill. And since we referred it to them up to date, we have not heard anything. I've reminded him many times on the floor of the House. What are the challenges you are meeting? Report to us. If you take action against them, say, oh, because I'm MPP. That's why he's taking action against me. Ah, I'm NDC. Because he's taking action against me. Because he's not in my party. That kind of division, that is not the purpose of politics. Politics is meant to unite us. Diversity is natural. There's nothing you can do about it. That is creation. And that is the spice of life. How come we are using that to divide us? Please, let the report flow. We need to legislate 
our friends just pass their law. So there's a speaker there, and it, it, you may have heard the part where he took on directly Kamala Harris and talked about why he believes it is anti-democratic for her to make those comments. And he was very uncharitable, in very strong words, talked to the president also, they had no power of the bill, and the bill is completely within his domain. And many have wondered, I mean, what really caused that particular outburst, especially directed at the US vice president, considering what she said, that simply it's a human rights issue. But that's a fact, is it not? Uh, we'll get to that, have that conversation. Now, the bill in question, the eight members of parliament introduced it, uh, they want to you know, criminalize LGBTQ activities in Ghana. Their human rights concerns raise the AAG's position is that there are fundamental human rights issues there. And the president in the speech uh, talked about the fact that there have been significant modifications that the Attorney General has initiated uh, on this particular subject. We've just seen Amambabwe talking about and raising his concerns there. Now, on the back of what we just watched happened with the president standing beside Kamala Harris, the well press have picked up on the president's own assertions. And this is how they are reporting it. This is CNN. The CNN headline is an interesting one. It's a very interesting spin on what you heard the president say there. According to the CNN, quote, Ghana's president softens country's stance on draconian LGBTQ bill as uh, Kamala Harris visit. So as far as the US as far as the CNN is concerned, what the president said in response to that question about the bill is a softening of the country's stance on the matter. Is it really? Were they misinterpreting the president or were they quoting him accurately? I get the views of both sides to chip in on this, but that's how the world media following the US vice president is reporting this particular matter. I'm very curious to know, I mean, if the government had seen this, are they happy with this, this particular headline? Did it reflect what the president actually said on this particular matter? But as a stance, that's what CNN is reporting, that the president has softened his stance on this particular matter. Very, very interesting indeed. He raised the question, what is the president's stance before on the matter and what it was it now? If you know what the president has said about this in the past, I mean, I doubt very much it's a softening. It's something that he's all, or he's a, he said, for many times, many have criticized him for saying be more categorical in the matter. Uh, that has been the criticism. And if you really look at the 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 homosexuality tolerance rate in Africa, it, it is clear that as, as a people, as a continent, we are significantly opposed to this particular matter. Um, you know, Cape Verde, South Africa, even in Ghana, overwhelming majority of people just do not want to hear about homosexuality at all. So it's a cultural thing, it's about values. You can't take that away from that because the evidence shows that. The United States, they know this. So questions have come, and that's what the speaker was saying. Why do you want to impose your values on our values? When overwhelming majority of people say, laws must reflect the wishes and the will of the people, right? Isn't that what our MPs are attempting to do when the evidence is so clear? Um, if you look at the bottom 10 countries, when it comes to those who they, they simply hate it. Uganda and Ghana uh, are there, right? Uh, we, we, the countries that hate homosexuality the most, Ghana is uh, number one. That's an interesting one. You know, Uganda um, has recently done this. So, so that tells you a story. That tells you why the politicians in parliament have taken this up. And I trust me, I believe this is going to become a big issue in elections next year. It's going to become. Which of these candidates... The, the two parties can be more categorical about this. Because remember, the religious leaders, the religious community, both Christian, both Muslim, huge majority of Ghanaians are falling that bracket. They, 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 don't, they want each of them to state where they stand on the matter. And look at the numbers that you will get. Assuming you go to the churches and declare your stance on this matter, this is a big political matter next year. Believe me, mark this down. It's going to play up. And who will have the courage in the face of the uh, economic sanctions that may come, the threats to actually go campaigning on, 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 on this particular matter. And then you go to the U.S. threat of sanctions for countries that dare want to go this way. U.S. sanctioned Uganda for anti-gay law, funds for programs were, were withdrawn, 
military-sponsored evasion exercise were cancelled. Later, Uganda Court and all the Anti-Homosexuality Act. So, so that tells you that there can be real consequences. Can Ghana afford that in the midst of this current economic crisis? This is what the U.S. had done in places where you know people have imposed have imposed this harsher sanctions for those engaged in this. And if you look at the Ugandan you know case, they had, they were then they, were, they reintroduced it. They reintroduced it nine years after the first one went out. In February 2014, the anti muslim bill became law. And then you talk about June 2014, U.S. imposes sanctions on them as a result of this. And then you have the August 2014 court then announced the law, as I just indicated. Now, March 2023, guess what? The new bill on LGBTQ becomes law again. So Uganda has been going back and forth on this for a while, but they've settled on a very strong law and the US is again warning them that there is going to be sanctions again as far as this is concerned. Just today, we've seen that the Catholic Bishops Conference have also said they have made the point government should reject this 139 million US assistance if LGBTQ is a condition. So I told you, the, the I made a point, you know the number of Catholics in the system in Ghana with votes? If you go to church and your priest preaches to you that this government is you know being iffy on the subject and vague and we are not sure that may influence votes this is very bold declaration reject 139 they know ghana is in crisis we need every money but once it's coming it's coming with lgbt condition the, ch the churches the Catholic bishops conference is rejected so that that tells you a story and that's why you're going to have the conversation tonight with my guests who are joining me amnesty international will join me rocks in the uh, is also my guest in the studio. And then we'll have the uh, religious leaders represented also in a conversation. Please stay with me. Roxy Nelson Dafia Mekpo is a member of parliament, but he's also on the uh, committee responsible uh, for this particular bill. He's also a, a, a sponsor of the bill. Uh, South Dice is constituency and is with me in the studio. Uh, Bishop Matthew Jemfi is the president of the Ghana Catholic Bishops Conference. Um, you saw the message that they had put out today. And Genevieve Partington uh, is the country director of Amnesty International. Uh, thank you very much, uh, lady and gentlemen, for your time here on PMS Press. Um, Roxing, so uh, the, the Speaker of Parliament spoke very loudly, taking on the U.S. for Kamala's, uh, Kamala's uh, comments. Uh, many have said, if you really listen to what Kamala said, she simply says it's a human rights issue for her. Um, it possibly, when the Speaker was trying to kill a fly with a sledgehammer there, Viewers, uh, especially my people in South Dine, they keep Palik Pervet Tongo, and my branch executives and constituent executives. So, Evans, Kamara Harris is not a fly <laughs> at all. In the scheme of things, she's like a wheel. So, I even am of the humble view that a sledgehammer will have very little impact. I see. We need the rockets. <laughs> <laughs> but that's on a lighter note. I think I have to commend the Right Honorable Speaker for leading this advocacy on our behalf with the sponsors. Uh, but for him, I don't think we would have gotten where we have today in respect of this matter. He has availed the institution of parliament for for us to be able to thrive uh, regarding the introduction of the bill and the processes that it's gone through so far, the resources placed at, at our disposal. It's, it's not every private bill introduced that has seen this massive support from Speaker and the parliamentary service. So he deserves commendation. Exactly because, you see, Parliament is the embodiment of the soul of the nation. Mm. That is why it's only parliament that the people we elect representatives from every nook and cranny of this country to represent their collective interest. So for in excess of 95 
six, seven, eight percent of Ghanaians to be interested and in support of a matter that is receiving attention in parliament. Speaker can can only but give us full support to be with with no choice. Yes. And we love him for that. Regarding the comments from the president vis-a-vis uh, -vis the comments from the U.S. Yes, vice yes. president, they are doing politics. They are playing politics. The, the president, on any good day, should be able to speak eloquently in support of this matter, but he's doing international politics. He doesn't want to appear uh, averse to the, the matters that we, the sponsors of the bill, are being deliberately invasive on the subject. Yes, and and he's been so for two, three years ago when the, when he was confronted with the same matter you know, on in, in faraway Europe, he said it was about it was bound to happen. We lambasted him for that for some time. He died down, and then he withered in again yesterday or three days ago. So, president has not been forthright, unlike Professor Mills, unlike. JDM when they were confronted. But what exactly are we seeking to do? We are seeking to actually elaborate on an existing provision in our penal, penal law. What is this? Section 104 of the Criminal Amendment um, Act, that's Act 29, criminalizes a certain act. Mm. That's sodomy. If you sexually assault a man through the anus, or you sodomize a woman through the anus, it is a criminal offense. That's what you call the natural kind of knowledge. Yes. Now, there has been other fit sets to this conduct, social conduct, social biological conduct. Persons have developed the taste, the social taste, to now socially legitimize a sexual relationship that uh, uh, gratifies from such conduct. So even though there's a very small law banning the, the conduct, we want to move into other facets of it. Mm. Look, four days ago, there was a very interesting news from Scotland. Mm -hmm. And it was like this. A Scottish man that raped some women and had not been found immediately. It took the police some time to make that discovery. When they uncovered the crime and pursued a man so that he will face the full rigors of the law, he had gone to, to, to surgically change his gender from a biologically male to an artificial female. So when he, when he was arraigned before court, the court actually came to the conclusion that even though he committed the, the crime, it was, it is, rape is such a high crime, even though he committed this heinous crime as a man, now she's a female. So the, the consequences for that had to be tampered with. And what the court did was that they now sentenced a transgender man into a female prison as though she's a female. A man, a man who in his previous incarnation yes. had raped. Not incarnation, women. he has not incarnated. <laughs> Just a stroke of a biological instrument. Now possesses a biological instrument. And, and now, now will now be, be living with other women yes. in the cell. In possession of double organ. Mm -hmm. You know, so this is the absurd levels we are taking this matter. To the extent that in countries that are not averse to this conduct, their judicial institutions are even giving recognition. That is the danger we face. Okay. I mean, but the bishop has joined us, so let yeah. me just quickly bring him. But I want to return to you, and I'll get uh, Amnesty. I want you to help me appreciate. I was speaking to the chairman of the committee who says that he signed the uh, report now, mm -hmm. and he actually said either tomorrow or Friday it will come to the floor uh, for the readings. And then he said that there have been changes that has come in 
from the bill we originally saw. I would like uh, you to walk the us bill, through. The bill is here. Yes, I would like you here. to walk us through some of the key changes that has happened, oh. so we can understand what the latest version is. Let me bring in um, the Bishop Matthew Jemfi, who is the president of the Ghana Catholic Bishops Conference. Bishop, thank you for your time here on PM Express. Hello, Bishop. Do we have B Bishop on the line? Uh, yes, please, I'm here. Hello, Bishop. Hello, I hear you. Thank you very much for joining us, Bishop. Bishop, I, I saw a news item today attributed to the Catholic Bishops' Conference where it is reported that uh, as far as the conference is concerned, um, any aid that may be coming to Ghana, almost 130 million plus, if the condition is for us to be more welcoming of LGBTQ, then Ghana should reject it. Uh, can you expand on that position for me? Yes, the, the point is uh, most of this money that come in, they are not grants. The loan that we take, so loan to be paid back. So, if conditions are attached to it, on the surface, uh, we are paying more and going to pay back more than what we are actually receiving or taking. Secondly, there are other issues that go to the core of the Ghanaian, mm. our culture, who we are as a people. And one such thing is this issue of uh, LGBT that we will give you money loans only if you change who you are, your culture, to accept these things. So if we get the money and we introduce this thing, then who are we again? We are selling and giving away our birthright. So we may get the money, but then who are you again? We lose who we are. This is going to the core of the, 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 the fabric of the Ghanaian society, the family relationship. Etc. So it is not any any uh, strings attached. This string attached is too expensive, mm. and and that is why I believe that if the uh, even the survivor of the nation is supposed to be attached to this law, the president or cabinet or uh, parliament, let them refer the matter to Ghanaians. Let them refer because it, it, it affects all of us directly and who we are as a people. As a people. Let the matter be referred to Ghanaians. If even we have to uh, uh, vote on it, that we take this money and then we accept this and let Ghanaians speak. We don't want some individuals uh, to make this decision on behalf of the entire Ghanaian population because it's going to affect all of us. Let, let, so that is that, that, so that is the position. Uh, let, let me ask yes. you, uh, am I right to assume that fundamentally the Catholic Bishops Conference is concerned that countries like the US with their power may either be interfering or using their influence to get our government, that may be our politicians, to toe their line on this matter of the LGBTQ and the bill before parliament. Is that a concern that you have? It's a big concern. It's a big concern because, you see, when we have parliamentarians and, say, the president, they have to keep the nation going. And if the money is not there, then the people may not even consider these uh, conditions which are being imposed on them for which reason they didn't get the money. All they will know is that the money is not there. So there could be problems for the government 
that so for that matter when uh, they are faced with such situations the temptation for them to compromise to sacrifice certain aspects of our values and those things are very very hard so you understand very very clearly and it is not a hidden matter that the u.s and other uh, groups outside uh, ghana are doing all they can to force their so-called rights, which is their right, not our right, down our throat here. Why we are doing that is a question we must all try to ask. Why? Why do they want us to live like this? Huh? In their place, one man, one wife. Why is it that we are not even fighting very hard to impose that on us? And they are saying that in their place, a man can marry a man, a woman can marry a woman. Mm. And they are forcing it. Why are they so persistent on this? And whose right? Who gave them that right? When did we decide on that right together? Is it their right they are imposing on us or who? So, yes, we are aware of the challenges in politics and this thing that the government may be facing now. But in this particular instance, this issue go to the, the foundation of us, of a people, who have a culture, who have their way of doing certain things. And if that thing changes, we do not know where we are going to end. Mm. So they should, they, 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 we are aware of the pressure, but we are praying that the president and parliament and all people involved will listen to what the Ghanaian people are saying, what they have requested, and let, not given let, let, me, let me ask you finally on this. The president has a lot of influence. Of course, he's the president of this great country, and he holds, wills a lot of influence over at least the MPP side in parliament. When this bill, or let me say, if it's passed, he will have to assent to it, um, and he has some powers there as well. Uh, what do you tell the president? If you, if you met him, for example, on this particular subject, considering, of course, the current economic challenges and all, on this subject, what do you tell him? What's the message that you deliver to the president if you met him on the subject? If I were to meet him, I would remind him that if you look at this bill uh, on this uh, LGBTQ, that has come from the people of Ghana. It didn't come from the executive. It did not generate in parliament. The people who have chosen the parliament, the people who have chosen him, and they say, this is what we want to be done on this issue. Probably one of the few laws generated from outside the executive and then the legislative. And Christians, uh, Muslims, traditionally, all of these people are in, <clears throat> they are speaking about this law. So I will tell him to be extraordinarily careful about whatever decision he takes on behalf of Ghana. And if I were him, I would just go for what the people as many they want to be done. And I would suggest to just reach into that, and then you will tell them, we all requested this. You ask us to do this. This is what we have done, and these are the consequences. Mm. And, and, and finally, thankfully, next year, we have a major elections. Um, and we will have two people, at least in the two parties, who will be seeking to lead this country in 2025. For the Catholic Bishops' Conference, um, how important do you think this conversation should feature in their own, I guess, presentation of policies and positions on this matter? Will this be, will, will this be an issue for you, an expectation from the leaders of the two parties going to an election that they declare their stance on it and what they plan to do about this uh, going forward? How important would this be for you in the process of electing the next president? Exactly. Since Ghanaian people, uh, or most people, have 
showing their position on this issue. And we also, as the public district, we also have our position. If it happens that uh, uh, one of the candidates stands for what the people want and what the public church also stands for, and there is another one who is clearly opposed to it, what the people want and what the public church also stands for, then there is no second day. Or there will be debate, but uh, it will be very, very clear where the people of Ghana and where that other one who opposes what the Ghanaian population wants, where he also stands. And you will put accordingly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that's Bishop Matthew James Fee, President of the uh, Ghana Catholic Bishops Conference. I uh, have uh, with me, still in the studio, Roxanne Dafiamekbo, uh, Genevieve Partington is the country director of Amnesty International. Genevieve, so the bill has traveled quite a bit. You've had a debate around this. There have been some modifications to the bill. You've had the Catholic Bishops Conference, Kamala, you have the president. Um, as far as your, the, your international organization is concerned, I'm pretty sure you've been very interested in this. What are your expectations now um, with where we are with considering this bill for passage? The Ghanaian parliamentarian. They will debate this thing. They will talk about it. I believe in our president also as well that as a democratic person and now that we are in a democratic dispensation, when the people have spoken, democracy talks about listening to the majority. Okay. So they have no reason to reverse it. So I believe they have to pass this law as the people have presented it. We will not accept any significant modification that dilutes uh, what the people have presented. They will put it in a more legal acceptable and uh, free way, but not a dilution of it. Uh, uh, that the people of Ghana will not uh, respond kindly to such things. Okay. Uh, Bishop, thank you very much. So do not accept any dilution. I, I, I want clarity if you have Jennifer, but let me come to you. That point he makes is very important. Yes. So uh, what has happened me, to the bill? Let, let me first of all calm the nerves of everyone yeah. regarding if the president decides not to assent to the bill mm. to become a law in the event we passed it. The constitution has made provision for such a scenario. Indeed, this is what the constitution says in Article 106, Clause 8. And it, and it goes like this. Where the president refuses to assent to a bill, he shall within 14 days after the refusal, A, State in the memorandum to the speaker any specific provisions of the bill which in his opinion should be reconsidered by parliament, including his recommendations for amendments, if any. Or B, inform the speaker that he has referred the bill to the Council of State for consideration and comment under Article 90 of this Constitution. 1069 says, Parliament shall reconsider a bill taking into account the comments made by the president or the council of state as the case may be under clause 8 of this article 10 where a bill reconsidered under clause 9 of this article is passed by parliament by a resolution supported by voices of no less than two thirds of all the members of parliament the president shall assent to it within 20 within 30 days after the passing of the resolution now, the provision in this constitution is very clear. They anticipate that there will be an unscrupulous president who may one day torpedo an effort by parliament after a bill has been passed. So mechanisms have been prepared. So let nobody go into a state of trepidation that when the bill is passed, the president can. But what you will get there, ultimately, parliament has the final say. We have the final say. That's what the speaker is saying. Okay. Now... 
Another propaganda has been put out is that the bill has been watered down. Okay. It's been diluted. Forgive me. Not at all. I haven't heard from Genevieve. Let me very hear from well, and I'll come well. to you because I, well. I, that is so important. And okay. I think the Reverend Minister uh, Bishop yes, alluded, to it. alluded to it. They should be rest assured. <laughs> yes. The bill has not been diluted. And then diluted. you walk me through what the changes have happened. Um, yeah. Genevieve, let me hear from you. What, what, what's, the, what's the Amnesty International's expectation now? Um, okay, so good evening. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm really sorry I can't be present. I hope my line is clear because the network is really bad. Yes, I, I can, at least I can hear you loud and clear. Great. So, um, yes, Amnesty, of course, is a human rights-based movement. So um, we do not support the bill, of course. And there are several reasons why we don't support it, because it simply violates a lot of international laws. Um, there are some contents of the bill. So like um, the Honorable said, um, I hear it's not you know, certain clauses haven't been removed. So um, I think, you know, since uh, 20 it's, uh, um, we need to take caution on the, it imposes restrictions and criminal penalties against a range of people so it's not just uh, people who identify as lgbt okay. it's also anyone who is towards the lgbtqi community so i don't know whether that's still in the bill because this was as of 2021 um it also places oblig okay well to report. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Genevieve warned us about the challenge with her line. Genevieve, and the line isn't isn't holding up. Let's see, maybe we can get on the phone to, to give her thoughts so that we could at least follow what, what uh, she's saying. Hopefully, uh, we can hear her. But I think that's the point she's making there whilst we try and get on a better connection. Let's go to that now. Yes. What changes has happened since? Because the president was clear that, oh, my attorney general has even made, he said, significant modifications. What are these? That, again, it's a big lie. The, the president has been misled. He's been misadvised on the matter. The attorney general brought an advice in the form of a momo, just like the other 150, you know, persons who have sent memo, persons and CSO and groups who have sent memo. In some areas, they raise some technical issues, like Amnesty International. I am shocked that Amnesty International says they are against this bill. Why? They came. We interrogated it. What is Amnesty International fighting for? Human rights. Human rights, such as what? Such as there the, are places in the US question, today where you... Question. Hold on. There are places in the United States of America today where you and I cannot build a house. We can't own a house. Is that not a human rights matter? It is. It is not of concern to Amnesty International. It is. There are, there are communities in the U.S. where after 6, 6 p.m., you and I as black men cannot step out. Is it not a, a human rights matter? It is. So why, is, why are they not speaking about those? But they are speaking about all of them, including, uh, including what they believe is wrong with the bill. What, what is wrong with this bill? It says it's, uh, there are questions there let about me, Let it's... me ask you. This government is spending a fortune on agriculture, on animal husbandry. Have you seen this government put two bulls together to breed? No. Two bulls together to breed? Uh, no, I guess. Or two boars together to breed? They give, they give to farmers a female, a female sheep and a male sheep so that they can breed. And then the point is? The point is that this, 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 the LGBT community and their activities, it is a form of a climate change. If we don't deal with it, it has a consequence for our biological survival. Okay, let, let's go to the So let's go of, to the bill. Yes. What have the you president, changed? The president claims that significant fun, modifications. Fundamental. For instance, if we say we propose the bill, if we say proper human values, and it is changed to human sexual rights and family values, is that significant? No, but of course, I mean that is the title of the uh, bill. But, but it's, that is that is immaterial. But, but no, this, but they are, but they are listen, more... even the president's own bill to parliament suffers a hemorrhage. Yeah. It suffers 
uh, it goes through changes. I understand you've watered down the the sanction, the prison term. No, hold on. From it, five no, to we, three, possibly. No, no, we did not. What we did was that we were seeking. Now, advocacy is no longer no, no, punishable. No, we've no. no. removed hold, it. Hold, no, so hold, go through. Go through the you, things you've changed. But let me explain. Okay. The, you see, there's a sentencing regime policy in place in the country. Mm. Unless we are seeking to vary that's the whole sentencing guidelines and regime, our intention was to was to was to increase the penal the sentencing regime by increasing the number of years you spend in prison. You see, the intention of of this bill is actually not to punish people for what they do, but to reform. You, everybody must understand that our essence is to reform people who are engaged in this. Indeed, sending people to prison, one of the key reasons you are in prison for, 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 engage, for engaging in a criminal act when you are convicted and sentenced is also for informative purposes. Mm. So if the sentencing guidelines is that the nature of the offense that we are describing, the upper limit is three years. As a proposal of the bill, I cannot insist that it should be five years. You but but it was five. You proposed five years. We proposed five. So you and the existing law says it should be three for a conduct that you describe as a misdemeanor. Mm. So so the so, original proposal has changed to three. Yes, okay. and that so that one. is not that is not anything drastic because mm -hmm. you will be imprisoned for engaging in conduct like this. Okay, what if the imprisonment has been taken away, then you can say that that's a drastic change. What else has changed? They, you should be asking them. Because we no, every, but this this is your this is your this bill. This is my bill. Yes. And I, I, I'm I'm telling you that every material proposal that underpins the bill is contained in the final draft. Yeah. So what? So tell, well, So what does the, the final bill, draft look the like? The bill describes specifics. See, look. If you go to cross cross three, mm. a person commits an offense if the person A names or purports to marry a person who is of the same sex as that person. Offense. Okay. That's, that's the offense. So in other words, you are categorically allowing same-sex marriage. Thank you. Okay. And that has been our focus from, the, from day one. So how can anybody say that is, this has so been it, 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 It's never bound to happen no, anymore. No. The two. No really marries or purpose to marry a person who has undergone gender or sex reassignment, except in the case of a person who has undergone a surgical procedure to correct a biological anomaly, including intersex. You know, there are some people who are born with both sexual mm -hmm. organs. Mm -hmm. it, it happens in our system. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are saying when you undergo a sexual, um, a, a, a medical uh, uh, procedure. Uh, procedure to correct this, mm -hmm. you cannot be found guilty okay. by this law. Then three, marries or purport to marry an animal or an object. Mm -hmm. So how has this been watered down? Four, holds Holds out as a lesbian, a gay, transgender, transsexual, a bisexual, an ally, a non-binary, all that. So LGBT, LGBT plus Q, Q, they are all captured. You, you can't, you can't so do how it. can anybody go onto the street and say the law has been watered down? Okay, I'm also, an, I also, I'm also told yeah. that there's a section in the in the original proposal yeah. that also made it an offense for you to advocate, yes, for you to and, propagate. Yes, but and you've like, taken that out. No, what we did, what we did was that we segregated it. For instance, if somebody is in academia and is conducting a research and to perhaps appreciate why for academic purposes, to understand the phenomenon, and you are defending that presentation, your findings. You see, if you are not careful, the law can regard that as an advocacy. Mm. But it's an academic work that you are defending, you are explaining your research findings. So we agreed, we are all intellectuals, so we agreed that such conduct cannot be punished by this okay. bill. So which conduct when it comes to propagation? Ah, when you sit structure? in this studio okay. and you advocate, you know, for commercial purposes. For commercial, explain this. For, for benefit. You do so for benefit. For benefit, okay. Yes, the law will, will prescribe that. So can, can Genevieve's organization, for yes. example, post this law after yes. it's passed? Yes hold a press conference and say we we believe the you know human rights of you know etc you know the, the position that they've made will that be why categ kenya, categorized kenya, as propagation? kenya kenya the kenyan supreme court yeah entered a judgment against the lgbt no in support of the lgbt activities 
Communities in Kenya, including women, held press conference and disagreed. That is human society. Okay. So, so that, that would not be our law. No, that, that is not the conduct that is our law. But, okay. but a deliberate advocacy to promote LGBT activities, that is our law. But that's, that's, that's tricky. I have, to, I have to define that. No, word. it's not tricky. I'm what, asking you, what? if a civil society organization yes. goes out and holds a press yes. conference yes. and says that the rights of LGBTQ must be protected and so, they believe so that they have a right what to... Genevieve and can do, what Genevieve and her, and her group can do is after that expression of disapproval, they can then proceed to court and challenge the terms of the law okay. on some ground. That is permissible. Okay, that, that's interesting. Yes, Stay that's, with me. that's permissible. G Genevieve is back, hopefully on a bit. Hello, Genevieve, I, I, I can see you now is clear and I, yes, I can I hear you. So. so please just proceed. Now you've heard some of the changes that has happened in the bill. Um, yeah, it still doesn't change anything for us. Um, as human <laughs> rights activists, like I said, um, it encourages um, very, um, you know, it encourages hate crime. Because if you are, you know, from 2021, First from what all, I knew, it does not. They no, they no, push, I, I no, no, okay. they push this agenda. It, 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 it does not. She, Let me show she, you. No, no, she, 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 okay. she, 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 she's okay. not smoking at all. So okay. I want, I want to hear. Okay. I want to hear. Yes, please, please, speaking, please, please, proceed. Please, please, please proceed. Please, please proceed. Yes, Genevieve. Yes. So, so as I was saying, um, it uh, it um, promotes hate crime. Let me give you an example. So, if people are perceived to be lesbian or gay, and let's let's just say me i'm in a hotel room with another lady and someone decides to call and suspect that i am a lesbian um you know it can it can promote hate crime because what if i am not and just as we catch thieves in ghana and we um do instant justice and mob action this can also um increase mob action towards this community so this is this is one thing i feel is not good. I think the law is, the bill is vague in terms of the, you know, what, what do you define as advocacy or supporting? What do you define as, okay, we are upset about this bill? Um, I think it's very vague on those terms. There's also one particular point in the bill I would like to know if it has been removed. That is the medical interventions on intersex children. I think that's an, a violation of children's rights because basically you're allowing the parents to decide um, which sex they want to be. And from medical research, sometimes what happens is that as the child grows, sometimes maybe the testos testosterone levels are higher and then maybe the parents maybe wanted a girl, so realigned the child's gender to a girl. And then they realize that, no, I feel more like a boy. So, you know, they are, they, are, they are suggesting medical interventions and they are also suggesting um, conversion therapy. I would like to know if the conversion therapy is still in the bill because conversion therapy is a very dangerous practice. It's um, conversion therapy entails, um, you know, changing an individual's sexual orientation using very evasive methods like brain surgery, hormonal and um, castration, castration, aversive treatments like electric shocks, nausea inducing drugs, hypnosis. And these are all non-evidence based medical, like it's, there's no evidence on this that it actually works. So I wanna know if conversion therapy is still in the bill. I also wanna say that, um, yes, yeah, so like I said, it's gonna really increase discrimination in our country, which is what we don't want. We want to move forward, not backward. Um, it's fine, we have a culture, it's fine, people have their beliefs. I don't think we should push um, certain beliefs. I, I, I completely understand the Catholic Church. I'm okay with them not accepting um, LGBTQI, but I'm not okay criminalizing the offense. Nobody is saying that you don't have to, like you can say it's like, okay, I don't like oranges. I like apples. That's okay. But when you say, okay, because I don't like apples, I'm going to ban apples in Ghana because I don't like apples. Then we have a problem with that. So I think this is something that we have to look at. Human rights are supposed to be for everyone. 
So what's happening is that the bill is going to violate a number of human rights. Obviously, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, it will violate it. It will violate the um, international law on um, children's rights as well. And so it's, it's a number of things. And, you know, right to freedom of expression, right to association and pr uh, privacy, you know, it's all going to be violated. And it's all those, all those rights are also enshrined in our constitution. So are we saying that the constitution goes out the window because we, of this bill? I mean, we have to think about these things. Mm. So um, those are, yeah. that's my take. Um, at the end of the day, me, I'm not, I'm not here to argue it out. For me, I consider, so far as you're a human being, you're my brother, you're my sister. It doesn't matter your sexual orientation. It doesn't matter your, who, how you identify yourself. At the end of the day, we are all humans and we should be treated equally. Um, in terms of uh, marriage and things, fine. Um, there are some states in the U.S. who haven't passed um, a, a, a Same law sex, on yes. yeah. marriage, same-sex marriage. That's okay. But the fact that you are criminalizing the, the, the you know, who, who I love, you are criminalizing that. That is the problem that we need to address here. And I must reiterate that the part on academics, researchers, and, and that kind of thing is actually quite vague. From what I know um, from the bill, from what I read last, it was quite vague. So um, if he can elaborate on that, that would be fine. Mm. And if he can also elaborate on the promotion of conversion therapy and then the realignment surgery, mm. I, I would really like to know the details of that. Thank Genevieve, you. Thank you. And, and we have a few, just a couple of minutes to wrap yes, up. So, yes. so if we can go to it. Uh, uh, question first of all, Genevieve, do you operate in Saudi Arabia? You, uh, uh, yeah, I'm listening to I'm listening Do to you national. operate in Saudi Arabia? Do you do, you do some know. of this advocacy in Saudi Arabia? Because there are strong cultural values underpinning the society of Saudi Arabia and other Islamic influenced countries. You don't do this kind of advocacy there. When you come to Africa, you want to you want to push these things down our throat. It won't happen. <laughs> Two. But she's not pushing it down your throat. Did you listen she's to her? She's doing advocacy. Advocacy. Yes. Towards what? I mean, so that's why you invited people to come and give yes, you because they, you wanted they, to hear all see, views. They came, that's they came, they came yeah. to make similar, similar stipulations yeah. before us. But it didn't course. fly. But at least you made some modifications. Made yes, some modifications. but the modifications are, are, are consequential to what bills go through anytime they yeah. come to parliament. Of course. Nobody said that the proposal we took to parliament to come back mm. unaffected. She, no. has, she has a few questions, if you can clarify. Yes. The conversion therapy. I think that's what you mentioned, that you it's see, still in the law. You see, in their mind, we are saying that such a condition is a medical condition. In their mind, they, they said it is not, and that it is a right. When my child exhibits characteristics or, or incidents of, of mental problems, I should say that the child has the right to decide his fate. But, she was, so, but the child was, your child was born with it. Yes, but it's a medical condition. So it is my right as a parent. But if that's to... a medical condition, yes. then the people who also say that they were born gay, is a medical condition. That is what we are asking for correction, medical <laughs> correction. <laughs> and it is the medical correction that they are against. That the child must have the right not to be tampered with until because she has a child's right. To be protected from seeking medical remedy for the true. condition. When you are born with a mental disorder as a child, Amnesty International is advocating that no, as a child, you have a right yeah. to not to be tampered with medically. So that provision remains in the, in the draft. It, it is. In, in the amended. In the, we, the are, we are saying that that condition is a medical condition. You okay. need to be treated. So this one that is going to go to the floor has that already. Has that in there? Yes. The, this is the bill that's going to go to the floor. Okay. okay. So under this bill, when if you have a child, has you can't you can you the father and parent can take the child yes. and and to the to a, to a doctor to go and change the. I see. Oh, no. Okay. It's, yeah. No, it's okay. I mean, my my producer is telling me that I have to yeah, I have yeah. to run up. Run so up. so so the issue is that this bill, technically speaking, it's even better than we sent it. It's been it's been refined for the better. It's not been diluted. As it's been put out, 
It is a bill that will meet the aspirations of the generality of Ghanaians. And we are encouraging every single MP of the 275 membership parliament to participate fully and throw their weight behind this bill. It is sponsored by eight of us. But let me put this matter on record. You are aware that they are even influencing our, our, our politics these days, the gay community. How? Yes. Some judge hasn't told you. No. What but it is happening. We are under attack. As in politics, as in your primary? So yeah, you... it's that they think that we are the strong advocates so we can be removed from parliament. When we are removed from parliament, the advocacy goes down. Oh, okay. But that's, that's an interest, of course. Yes! Yeah, well, but that makes yeah, sense. influencing our elections. Yeah, but of course, you are advocating. So if you lose your primary, you you're not going So, back. So, so what, in your constituency, have you have, you, have people come to run against you with that? Why? They can sponsor from afar. You don't have Have to. you noticed that happening? Yes, we've noticed it. We've been alerted. So... It is not something we are taking lightly. These people are on a vendetta. They are on an agenda to ensure that this bill doesn't succeed in parliament. I actually, I've not been paranoid on this. One. We are not paranoid. You want you out of parliament. The people want us out of parliament. I'm sure if you invite You don't them, have any evidence. I'm sure we, you are we just... have No, we have evidence. Okay. We have evidence. But uh, we are just... We, we, we are speaking to the fact that these are people who are not, who are not sleeping. Is it Ghanaian-led or foreign-led? It is always Ghanaian-led with foreign influence. Okay. Roxin, thank you. Genevieve, uh, apologies there, but the line didn't help. I really wish I could have had a lot more uh, with you on this uh, and had your views. You know, but, we have uh, even been threatened that won't be granted visas to some countries. Which You're country? also aware. Which country have, have they I said we've been threatened. Okay. And you're the rest of people. <laughs>